Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am, well it's kind of, it's Thursday. It, I would say midweek, but whatever, it's Thursday. Not a traditional day for me to be out and about. And I'm in the Jeep today. I'm heading out, do a little bit of off-road, do a little bit of cooking. That was big. I don't know if that was a jackrabbit or a coyote, but somebody got flattened on the dirt road here. So just decide, decided, I thought it's been, you know, a little while since I've been out in the Jeep. Apparently, allegedly, it's been a long while because I went to start it this morning and it didn't start. It just went click. Now these, you know, newer vehicles, they have under voltage protection. So what I mean by that, and you know, in the older cars, when your battery was low, you go to start it, go rah, rah, rah. <laughs> it would try and turn the starter over, which a lot of times would mess up your starter, low voltage. These newer ones, they just go click. They're like, hey, you know what? There's not enough voltage for me to even attempt to start. So yeah, that's a thing. Well, luckily I have this, uh, I don't know if you could see that, the NOCO booster. I got a GB40 in here and I keep one. I have one of those, I think, in every vehicle of, you know, some form or fashion. They're not all the same brand. I had bought, I think, two of them before I got onto this NOCO brand. But this one here, this one in particular, I used, I've used it a lot on other things. I was having to move around an old Chevy when I was trying to sell some property and every time we went up there, you know, everything was completely dead. We actually drove it with this on there for a while, you know, just around the property and different things like that. It worked really well. So anyway, long story long, I it went click. I'm in the garage and I'm like, oh, well, that's stupid. You know, I always feel dumb, but I didn't think it was, I didn't think it had been that long since I've driven this. You know, you got to drive them to keep the batteries topped up. And obviously you can put a trickle charger in there, but it's never my intention to have a vehicle that has to get on a trickle charger. I'm gonna, I'm reducing my inventory of vehicles as it is right now. I'm working on that. But, you know what I mean? If I get to the point where I'm having to trickle charge vehicles, then I just gotta get rid of stuff because the whole idea of having them is driving them. So, somehow, some way, then this is a new, new-ish battery. The other battery had been in here for whatever, four or five years, and it finally, gave out in a in a cold winter when I wasn't driving it at all so I replaced it so it shouldn't have done that I don't know why it did that I just made it out to the desert. It's a little breezier than I thought out here. But man, is it green. Like, look how green the desert is. Got, got a lot of water this year in snow and rains. It had a good spring as well, some spring showers, but it is green everywhere. This is actually the high desert area. It's uh, you can see what the roads look like. They're uh, orange, kind of orange clay color. A lot of sandstone, a lot of rocks embedded in the tracks around here. But this is a place I come to on once in a while when I do my desert trips. I'm out off roading and I can come to here and I have such a like almost a 360 degree view of everything and I can cook right here. But it's just, it's way, it's, it's not breezy, it's windy right here. 
no way I could cook, no way I could put out the awning, at least not the awning on the Jeep. This is not like the one I have on the Land Cruiser. This one requires legs and, and guy ropes to tie it down if, if it's breezy at all. So I think I'm gonna keep, keep adventuring around. I may have to jump up and over these mountains here. There's a valley back in here, actually with a little forested area. There's a valley of trees back in there that I might be able to go to. It doesn't take long, really, kind of up and around and up and over these mountains, but uh, I forgot it's it's ant season in the desert. Big giant red ants, giant black ants. They love this area out here, so you gotta look for the big ant mounds before you set up. So putting a little uh, sweet heat and salt and pepper on the steak. Last time I didn't really get a lot of the heat from the sweet heat, so we'll see. But I did when I did the fish, but I also had garlic in there, so I'm curious to see which, which it was. I put a little bit more on this time. I also brought some uh, sweet corn in a can because I couldn't find any. I don't know when when is corn season. <laughs> when are they available? Oh, it smells really good. Super sweet. Look at that. Look how bright that is in there. Delicious. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make some coffee. So this is uh, my other jet boil that stays in the Jeep in this bag here. I didn't realize how small of a canister I had, but I don't, I haven't used this one in a while. Should be fine. So I see a lot of people with uh, MSR stoves and I don't know what they're called reactor or something but they I've seen these stoves where they have to light them manually with a with like a lighter or match or whatever and they can't have the pot on there it just seems like there's a lot of uh, downfalls to that that style of one versus this I, I, don't, I guess it's maybe it's price like how much they are but these jet boils work really good. I mean, at least for what I use them for. I may have lost my way on this steak a little bit. The wind was blowing pretty hard, so I had to keep the, the controls up and it cooked way faster than I'm used to and the temp is a lot higher than I'm used to, so we'll see. We shall see. No, it's good. Oh, it's perfect. I took it off early. It was cooking a lot faster than normal. I got a better sear on the outside at least. But the inside, oh, it's perfect. Perfecto. So my lid has got a little drain section in it. So I drain out a little bit of that water of the corn. It's been a bit of a strange day so far. The day started off absolutely perfect. 71 degrees Fahrenheit at, uh, I was about 9.30, 10 in the morning when I was driving. 
other than the battery being dead, like I said earlier. But I got out to the desert area, and wow, the wind was really whipping. So I came up out of the desert in the mountains. I think I showed, came up and over, dropped into this valley that I'm here. And when I first, I stopped to check a couple sites farther back, there was no wind. But it was, you know, this kind of works its way through a, a valley of pines here in the high desert. Uh, there's other trees besides pine. There's some, some oak and different things. But I got to here. And it was an, it's a nice spot. It's not exactly level, but it, it doesn't matter. I'm not camping here. I'm just cooking and eating. The, uh, the wind was blowing pretty good through here. And it, it, it dropped down into about 68 degrees. And now it's past 11. So about 68 degrees, 11 in the afternoon, morning. And the wind was blowing across. And, the, you know, the cooker's right here. So it was hitting... It was hitting the flames. I had them cranked up, but I don't know if you can see, you can see from there, the perfect coloring. A nice sear, a little brown, a little pink. It's perfect. And this corn, mmm. For, I don't know when the last time I had canned corn was. I've, you know, I've done a couple times corn on the cob on the grill, and it's, incredible uh, you don't add no butter no nothing to it it's just perfect the way it is this has got that it's for it's not mushy at all it's crisp it's got that bite to it really good and the meat this is uh top sirloin again the cheap cut perfect so I don't know what the deal is with steak these days. Oh, <clears throat> I got some of that sweet heat in there. The wind is blowing right now. And it's making creaking noises with this awning. This awning, it's not roped down right now. And this awning needs to be if there's wind. Now the wind has shifted. It's actually coming from, I can probably show you with maybe the paper towel. So it's blowing from back here now, across. It's switched. The other thing that's pretty wild is the skies were completely blue. Just gorgeous. Just absolutely. That's why I just kind of figured I'd jump out and get a day in out of nowhere, which is how it happens. Monsoon clouds. De mon monsoon clouds. <laughs> monsoon clouds developed. And they are currently kind of blowing overhead and the way these winds are whipping around i think we're going to get some monsoon rain this is really good i um i wasn't sure what to cook with the steak i asked my girlfriend and she said she went in the pantry and looked around she's like we got chili we got a new canned chili that we wanted to try out it's supposed to be pretty good i don't know what brand it is but Maybe I'll bring that out, too, and do one and try it. See if we can get a really good canned chili. Because when we make chili at home, obviously, we don't use a can. I mean, you use, like, tomatoes and stuff like that out of a can. But she said we got corn, chili, we got green beans. I was really contemplating the green beans because I usually like green beans out of the can. They're fine. But I hadn't had corn in such a long time. And I was hoping... For this kind of, I mean, I don't can't show you, but not mushy at all. And that's how you want your corn, just like straight off the cob. It's so good. A little coffee action. You know, even though it's dropped into the 60s, there's still, there's bugs, ants. We get a lot of ants out here in the desert, red and black ants, big ones. Like the size of your tip of your pinky. They're really big. About the lift on a Toyota, you know what I mean? They're big. We get horse or I say horse flies, but I guess they're cow flies because we only have cows out here. We have wild horses, but mostly cows. And then these little gnat type things, some kind of mosquito gnat that just, they're big though. They're pretty good size. That's the summer for you though. That's why I always say, man, if you love camping and you go out in the summer all the time, 
you should try the winter just once. There's literally no bugs. Yes, it's colder. Yes, you have a jacket and pants on, but no bugs. For me, the trade-off is totally worth it. Wind's really picking up. I can't tell from where I'm at with the mountains, but the clouds seem to be heading southwest. So once I break back out of these mountains, I'll see if it's actually raining anywhere. I mean, these monsoons, they happen quick. They just dump and then they're gone, just like how fast the clouds develop. Woo. It's funny with the wind, it, it, it feels like everything is sped up because you're kind of cooking faster. At least I was. Because it was, blo you know, I couldn't keep the, I guess if I had the, had it back here on on my tailgate of the Jeep, it probably been w more controllable. But because the way the ground is here, this is a big hill going this way. Come, this is coming down. You can see it back there where it's all bright. This is about the only semi flat spot. It's still tilting though because coming from up the hill all the way down to the creek bed that runs down the middle of the valley here. It's a neat little area. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, people come to this area. It's it's pretty easy to get to. I this last bit, I wasn't even in four wheel drive in the Jeep, but that's not unheard of. Like this thing goes, <laughs> it goes almost everywhere in two wheel drive. At least out here, it it takes a lot to challenge this thing. Big deep ruts, big boulders. Obviously, mud. Mud is the great equalizer for any vehicle. But roads like this, two wheel drive. 37s, you know, and geared correctly, it you can and the right suspension. I can carry momentum through things that normally you go really slow through and possibly need four wheel drive. But it, what I was saying was, it looks like there's I've seen half a dozen, you know, rock firings out. There's actually one right in front of the Jeep, a pretty good sized one. But if people are camping here, you know, they're sleeping like this. Even if they park like, oh, my head is uphill. It doesn't matter. Man, it's like one of those, those Craftmatic adjustable beds <laughs> where you got your head all cranked up in the air like the commercials. Oh, my goodness. So you can see now I'm actually have the camera facing up that hill I was talking about. So the mountain up here kind of steep and then the ground is sloped all the way down. It's about, I would say from where that mountain comes down steep down to where it V's into the creek bed, 500 yards, 500 meters, whatever, you know, half a mile, maybe half a mile. It's a neat area. It's, it's fun. This is a, uh, for me, this area normally is kind of a transitional zone coming from the high desert through the last pine forest until you break out into the really high mountain desert up there. I've done a fair few videos, but if you stay on this trail that I'm on, this is actually part of what they call the Great Western Trail. If you ever look it up, it's it's weird. It's there's not a there's information out there, but it's not like heavily detailed, I don't think. At least like the a .gov site or even, you know, a user created site of the Great Western Trail. It actually goes from Mexico to Canada. And it goes from the from the north and south through Arizona, which is a long way. And I I end up catching the trail in a lot of areas, further north, further south, right here, closer to where I live. But this part of the trail, like I said, it transitions from a high desert to, and I showed you that earlier in the video, the high desert area where it's windy, to this, you know, semi-forested area. There's trees everywhere in this valley. Then as it's climbing, it breaks out into the high mountain desert, no trees, just those desert shrub bushes that can get, they can get pretty big, but it runs the, it runs the ridge line of these mountains. And these are called, well, further up, it's called Mingus Mountain. If you want to look it up on a map, Mingus Mountain. So it runs from south to north or north to south, but I take it up that way. And then as you get to the top of those mountains, that's where I was in the video with the Lexus and I could overlook in the, the Verde Valley in Sedona on that Red Rock Trail that took me eight hours. 
you end up up there and you keep going. You cross the Verde River. It, it goes up into the other big areas that I love up there by Williams. It kind of hangs a right and heads over past Flagstaff and then up toward the Grand Canyon. The Great Western Trail, it's, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Some areas it's basic, but most areas it's pretty fun trail, especially from here up to Williams, it's like the best part of the trail for me because there's some really fun stuff on it. But that's that, the Great Western Trail. So it's not too far away. It's down by that dry creek bed behind the camera. But these are some of the views you get as you drive that. I really, I really enjoy that. This portion here, I can do a loop in about five hours. And then the other stuff, it takes, you know, a good eight hour day. One day, I, w I actually want to map it out, and it would obviously have to be done in segments, but I'd love to see just how far I could go within reason. Like, I don't want to go south of Phoenix, because it, it obviously stops in Phoenix, and then we resume down the Sonoran Desert, because it was created before the big cities, right? <laughs> I've readjusted the camera, now we're actually looking down the hill, so I just spun around so you could see that it continues way down. I don't know if it's you can tell on camera, but it's an, it's a fun area, except for the bugs. It's summertime bugs. Yay, bugs! <laughs> Arizona bugs are aggressive, man. They're like, they're bigger, whatever version, whether it's the horse fly, the black fly, the, the mosquito, the gnat, they're all bigger versions out here, and they're kind of like, you know, they got that, wild west mentality where you know they don't just buzz around here they go boom they just run into you like dong like headbutt you or something so they're actually really not that bad here the funny thing is i as long as i can remember out here eight times nine times out of ten i'll have like one black fly or horse fly big you know big fly one all the and like i can see maybe three or four of whatever these other things are gnats or something but I, it's not like i got a million it's not like alaska or canada where you're like you know or you know western australia where you gotta wear the the stinking gnats man that for me i don't care how tough you are if you're tough you're really tough you can take the flies i don't care it doesn't bother me what bothers me is that would ruin a trip for me, right? So I would obviously plan around that type of thing. There's obviously some unforeseen times when you, you don't know what's going on. Or, you know, you don't know that uh, flies are going to be there or whatever. But that amount to where you'd have to wear that, that would ruin it for me. Like the beauty of Alaska, right? I see these guys, I see those, the shows, right? The shows where they're the people that live, they're the survivalists, right? And they're just used to it. They, they probably smell like bears or whatever. And they just got fly. Forget that, man. That, it's not for me. Hey, you know what? At least I know what I like and don't like, right? I've gone along enough to where I don't need to put up with stuff that I don't like to ruin my trip. Winter time, baby. But winter time in Alaska. Woo-hoo. Might be a little crazy. So top sirloin steak, $6. I know that's expensive, but that's way cheaper than like the New York strip or, you know, all that other stuff. I like the top sirloin. Sure, it's not as marbled as the other ones, but to be honest with you, if you cook it right, the way you like, obviously, but... When I say cook it right, for me, I'm not overcooking it because there's not a ton of fat. It's not all marbled up, but that means there's more meat. And if it's tender meat, at that price, the other steak that we got the other week when I asked her to get me fish and steak just as a backup, she got the uh, New York Strip or something. I always forget the name of what she likes. I don't know. Something just like that. It was $16 for a steak this big. Six dollars, sixteen dollars. Six dollars is expensive. I've been was getting those for four bucks. Summertime though, probably, right? Holiday seasons and stuff. But don't be afraid to try a cheaper cut of meat. And remember, you're gonna have to cook it a little bit different, right? Sometimes you have to cook it longer, sometimes shorter, whatever it is, and definitely cook it to your taste. Because I have people 
that I've talked to live streaming, we talk a lot about food. And there's people that go from from the medium from the rare to the medium rare all the way up to the well. And you know, as I always talk about, if you like something great, don't don't think that because someone likes a steak medium well that that's something bad. You know, it's like maybe you don't like something that they like or whatever. So just I always say our differences from each other is what makes us interesting to each other. If we were all the same, it'd be like. <clears throat> whatever that's it for me i think i am going to call it there not really film anything going on i've showed you guys this area before and like i said i'm in two-wheel drive in this thing so it wasn't really about that it was just about getting out driving the jeep cooking some food and talking to you guys all right everyone thank you so much for watching i will catch up with you all next weekend